now we're going to go into designing the course. So this is a really interesting part on designing a course. Once you know who your target audience is, you have a topic, you drill down a little bit, try and narrow that down, you can ask it to design a course based on different design models. I'm going to use Bloom's taxonomy. So if you don't have any experience with instructional design, you can look up some different things. But Bloom's taxonomy is a pretty standard one. There's some others I can't think of right now. There's Addy, there's problem solution based. There's a bunch of different ones. So I'm going to use Bloom's taxonomy, which is based on it measures people's level of understanding going from just understanding to being able to observe it, to being able to implement it, uh, things like that. So I picked the course on branding. And basic prompt is, can you help me design a five-lesson online course on what your topic is using Bloom's taxonomy? So it will understand that since it's a standard instructional design model. The course should help. And here's where you want to get specific, who your audience is, be able to and put in your specific outcome. Provide the information in a table format. So you can be specific about the formatting that includes learning objectives, key points, and learning activities for each lesson. So again, really specific. All right. So if I go back now to my chat, I'm sticking with that retirees, that ideal persona of Mary, the legal consultant. So as you continue through your chat, it will remember. You don't have to keep putting that information in each time. It's only if you're starting again. So I said, can you help me design a five lesson online course on number three? So that was the choices that it gave me for topics right? Branding your legal expertise. I said the course should help new retirees set their new business apart from competitors. It should include creating a unique selling proposition, developing a personal brand, and leveraging content marketing to build their brand. I said provide the information in a table format that includes learning objectives, key points, and learning activities for each lesson. All right, so this one, you can also put these into bullet points as you go through. So I have it in one big paragraph, but you can actually press control enter and do bullet points also whenever you have a lot of different information to put in. And it came out with that table because I told it to do that table and it did the lesson learning objective, key points, learning activities. Now, this is pretty high level right here. All right. You've got understanding branding and business. Okay. Yeah. You'd want to do that. It's got the learning objective to understand the concept. So that's a good introductory for branding. Key points. What is branding? Why is it important? The role of branding and a learning activity. Now the learning activity, listen to a podcast or watch a video about branding. I'm not thrilled with that learning activity. I know from also again, from being a course creator, that's not really great. And you know from your own audience, that's not necessarily a great learning activity for, the, um, for them to understand branding. Especially, say, if it's someone who's very busy, they're not necessarily going to listen to a podcast. You should be providing that information. So this, again, gives you ideas. It's saying to do a lesson on branding, a lesson on unique selling proposition, because I so told it to developing a brand content marketing. Now, what you're going to find when you do some of these course design ideas is that some of its lessons that it proposes are really full courses all on their own. So like content marketing for brand building, we have a whole course on that. That's a big topic. Developing a personal brand, that's a big topic as well. So this is already a pretty high level course. And you could break each one down and ask it to break down. Unique selling proposition, it's got the learning objective is to create a compelling USP that sets your business apart. Key points, what is it? How to identify it? How to communicate it? And a learning activity could be doing a SWOT analysis. Uh, that's pretty hardcore for someone who's a beginner. So again, use your judgment, use your experience. 
And it's saying, remember, each lesson should build upon the previous one. So it's giving you a little bit of tips in there too. So I'm saying, and I think I'd put this on the slide as well, that you want to also break it down. So now you now is when you really want to start pushing. So when you're doing any kind of prompts and asking chat GPT for stuff, you have to follow up to drill down further. Don't accept the first response. The first response will be a little high level, no matter how much detail you give it. So you need to specify what you want it to break down further. Break it down into key steps the learner needs to know. Give examples. You can ask it for more creative learning activities. Tell it, ask it to say what materials they'll need. And then you can continue on to lesson two. So you can just say, can you do the same thing? You don't have to repeat it all. So in the chat, I'll go back. I said, can you break down lesson one into key points the learner needs to know? Give examples for each point. All right. So it started doing that. So now we're finally starting to dive into a little bit more. It's diving deeper because I told it to dive deeper and break it down into what is branding? Why is branding important? And seeing you'll already know your topic doing this. You need to know your topic so that you know whether it's correct or not. Because as I mentioned earlier, it can hallucinate and just make stuff up to make you happy. Not necessarily trying to make you happy because it can't think that way, but it wants to put an output. So you need to check that. And there'll be more stuff that you want to add. So what is branding? Why is branding important? Okay, this is good. Recognition, trust, attracting your target audience. And if you already know your topic, again, I mentioned earlier that it can be great for reminding you of things that you should be covering, that because you're an expert already, maybe you forgot about that, that it's important. Recognition, trust, it's got good points on each one. And I like that it writes in full sentences and proper grammar, one less thing to worry about. But it, the examples aren't always so great. So like for recognition, it says a strong brand makes you immediately recognizable to your customers. For instance, think about McDonald's golden arches. You'd know them anywhere, right? That's not a great example for your target audience. I wouldn't have used that and I would ask it for new ones. It's using examples. Amazon, I always try and push it to use examples because that's what's going to enrich it. And it also will show you where you will want to replace the examples. Okay. Attracting target audience. It's the role of branding and differentiating your business. Got all that. And then it did suggest learning activities. So for learning activities in lesson one, encourage your students to reflect on these examples and consider how they can apply the principles, et cetera. 